What's up guys, in this video what I want to do is factor using the difference of two squares, not once, not twice, but three times. You know, you might be looking at a problem like this and say, all right, well, I know the difference of two squares, but this doesn't seem like I can factor it by the difference of two squares. Now, if you don't know the difference of two squares, well, let's just do a quick little review for you. Okay, so the main idea is we have to have a square term minus another square term. And the problem here is I can't really rewrite two as a square number. Like I could rewrite the x to the 14th square number, like x to the seventh um, squared, that'd be x to the 14th. And I can do the same thing for x to the um, sixth. But again, the problem is this two, I cannot do that. And if you even know about 512, you'd recognize that that's not a square number either. So you have to have the whole term to be rewritten as something squared. So then what I'm gonna do is say, well, there's another thing I recognize. Like that has a two and that is even. So I can factor out a two. Right? And then here, they both have x raised to a power. So therefore, I can factor out a common um, x term raised to a certain power. So therefore, I'm going to, first thing I'm going to do before I get to this is factor out the GCF. Now, the GCF, again, is the greatest common factor, the greatest factor that evenly divides into both of these terms. And that case is going to be a 2. And then, let's see, um, the highest number, the highest variable or x that raised to the highest power that divides into both of these is not going to be x to the 14th. It's going to be x to the 6th, right? Because x to the 14th does not evenly divide into x to the 6th. x to the 6th, though, does divide into x to the 6th, as well as an x to the 14th. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out this GCF of a 2x to the 6th, and then whatever is left over. Now, again, when I say factor it out, I'm basically dividing the 2x to the 6th by both these terms. And I'm going to rewrite that on the outside. And now, whatever's left over, I'm going to rewrite inside of these parentheses. Okay, and again, remember, guys, you can always go back and check your work, right, by just multiplying this back out. 2x to the 6th times x to the um, 8th is going to give us a 2x to the 14th, and 2x to the 6th times a negative 256 is going to, you're going to have your x to the 6th, and then, you know, 5 or 12 divided by 2. You can see it works out there. Okay, now, what I want you to see is like, all right, now I know I can rewrite x to the 8th as a square number, right? That's x to the 4th squared. Um, so I can go and rewrite that, and then I say, all right, is 256 a square number? And hopefully, if you know your squared numbers pretty well, like I think for my students, I always rec I always recommended that they knew all the way up to 20 squared, just because like typically in a math class, like after you get past 15, those really don't show up a lot. Um, but I think it's always important just to kind of have that as like in your back pocket, right? The little toolbox um, that you should know at least the square numbers up to 20, preferably even up to 25. I think beyond that, you're gonna use them so less that typically you're gonna have a calculator with you anyways if you're doing high numbers like that. But I think at least at the bare minimum, up to 15. And then hopefully you recognize that that can be written as a 16 squared. Okay, so what I want you to do is recognize how I wrote this, right? I rewrote it as a square number minus another square number. Because when I recognize something as a square number minus another square number, I can now follow the difference of two squares. Now this GCF is always gonna remain on the outside here. But now we're gonna be able to factor a difference of two squares for the first time. And I'm just gonna leave that, 200, um, that 2x to the sixth on the outside. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm taking my first two term, first term, and then subtracting from that term, and then I'm going to add it to that term, okay? And now recognize here that, uh, again, I look like I have something with, again, another square term, right? I have x to the fourth, I can rewrite that as x squared squared, right? And 16 is a square number, that's going to be a four squared. Now, I can't do anything with this, right? Because that's not the sum of two squares, it's only the difference of two squares. So I'm gonna go ahead and rewrite this over here, and then now I'm just gonna rewrite this as a difference of two squares. Okay, and I'm only writing it like this, so therefore you can see exactly what I'm doing. I don't want you to feel like um, you have to do this extra step. I'm just rewriting it with these extra parentheses so you can see it is a square number minus another square number, right? So therefore now I can rewrite it again using this property um, or using the property of the difference of two squares. Okay, and now hopefully you recognize you're gonna like, oh my God, I have another square number minus another square number, right? Because four is a square number, that's two squared. Here, I can't do anything with this. And then hopefully you recognize here without having to do parentheses again, like that's x squared and that's two squared, right? So that's gonna be an x minus two, x plus two. Now, this one was only a polynomial with two terms. And you can see we factored quite a bit. But a lot of students usually don't have trouble with factoring of two terms. They usually have trouble when they have to factor four terms. And in the next video, that's exactly what I'm going to do. 